10 minutes. So anyway, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, I, too, suffer from a uh, lack of sleep, so I'm going to try and get my energy going. The Red Bull has not kicked in yet. Um, oh, thank you. So we want to broach a topic about Ansible Wisdom. Um, show of hands who knows, who has no idea what Ansible Wisdom is, so we can... Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So I guess it's good that I do have a, a few slides here. Okay. That's good. All right. We'll jump right in. Um, so the, the core of it is, is Ansible Wisdom was something that was announced at last Ansible Fest. Um, it is an AI-driven service, and it's a partnership between IBM and Red Hat. And um, they decided that Ansible was going to be the first product that they wanted to focus on, right? So th this you know, project wisdom or this AI capability um, doesn't, it's not just made for Ansible, right? It's made to cover a wide variety of, of technologies, but they decided to start with Ansible first, right? And, you, and I see folks looking at me probably saying, what does that have to do with the community? We'll get there, I promise. Um, so uh, the whole idea around this, right, is to really, the persona around this is to help users, right? It, this is not a, a tool that is necessarily going to be something that, um, um, uh, we've contributor focus. This is a user focused tool, and um, it is a uh, um, hosted service, right? But we'll get into the details of that. The whole idea around what Ansible Wisdom is supposed to do is supposed to be able to help the experience, right? To help those to lower the barrier entry of people starting to use Ansible, right? So those of you in the room who I have no idea why my laptop keeps refreshing. Sorry about that. Those of you who are in the room. You probably, this is probably not going to be your thing, right? Because you know how to write Ansible playbooks. You have a lot of experience. Um, but what you may find is that you may find the hints that uh, uh, Wisdom offers may help you to write your playbooks even faster. Or you may decide that you won't leverage this tool at all. But th think of it from the perspective of you're trying to onboard someone new to Ansible, and this kind of gives them a leg up and gives them and kind of accelerates the process along. Um, so this is the, the overall capability around wisdom that you will find, right? So be able to help generate content, be able to help do content discovery, um, content optimization, and content explanation, right? So this, these are the capabilities that this AI capability uh, tool will, uh, service will be able to provide to you um, when using it. Um, so just kind of, it so far, I don't know why this laptop is driving me nuts. This is like uh, pet peeve of mine. Here, so it's something with your switch. No problem. Good. So before I move into any more, I'm sure you have questions, but so far is the part, is, is, is it clear as to what this is and, and at least as far as, yeah, I know, it's just going to keep getting worse. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's extremely distracting, um, but it's okay. Yeah, well, you know, I have a, this is a, this is a Mac and it's a manager Mac, as I would call it, right? This is not a real uh, powerful machine, so the more you mess with it, the more it gets angry, so... Um, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. All right, cool. So, any any questions so far around what Ansible Wisdom is? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. All right, we'll jump into the good stuff. Is it doing it again? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is just some screenshots, some examples of what Wisdom would look like, right? So it is a VS Code plugin, right? So as you're in VS Code, you're writing your content. Um, if you can write in there a direct command as far as something like create a virtual server. Um, Wisdom would then make a, a recommendation to you and say, hey, do you want to use this content uh, below? You can either accept it, you can ignore it, or you can modify the recommendation, right, and, and modify the code snippet that's offered. If you accept, it's added to your playbook or your role and you keep you keep moving right it's just that simple no idea what was supposed to happen there uh, I guess this is just more of a build out all right I'm gonna jump to the good stuff because I know you just have questions right this is the part to me that means the most uh, because this is a part where uh, to the community um, the transparency collaboration and choice is really important um, and so the Red Hat is committed to making sure that everything used by this model, right? So anyone familiar with AI, right, you have a model and then you have a data set, right? And then you have to train that model, right? And that's how AI works, right? 
Red Hat is committed that all the content being used by the model is approved open source licenses, right? And to be clear, the, the, the AI model, right, was, was, was created by IBM in conjunction with Red Hat, right? So it's, it's, it's not as simple as um, it, they took a few playbooks and now the, the model knows what to do, right? It's, not, it's much more complicated than that. Um, and, but they, are, they do use content, right, to help train that model, right, to make it better, to make improve on it. Um, and the content that is used to train that model, it's, it will be coming from Galaxy, right? So just being totally honest and transparent about that. Doesn't mean that that's what was used to create it, right? Because you can't use, just can't use content to create a model. It takes much more than that. And that's why IBM um, is uh, the big player here to help us with that. Um, upstream content con computers, uh, contributors also have a choice of opting out, right? So you'll have the choice of opting out, right? Any content you have in Galaxy, you can opt out and say, I do not want my content to, be, to help train this model. That is your choice. No problem, right? You have that choice. Um, there's some more details around that, but uh, uh, meaning as far as how you do it, is, and it's just a weird nuance until we get Galaxy and G as the primary uh, place, but just wanted to s talk about that. Um, and um, another commitment Red Hat has is that we will always let you know where the data, the, the data set, right? We will let you know the data set that's used to train that model that was something that will be exposed to the community as well, right? So there is no hiding of that. You'll know exactly the data set that's used to train that model at that point in time. If you want to go and search for your name, you can probably search for your name in there uh, if you opt in, right? If you opt out, then you, there's no worries there. So before I move on to that, I would love to take questions. Because I know I just said a lot in this last slide, and I want to I wanna hear your thoughts. That's why I'm here, actually. One of the reasons why I'm here, other than the fact that I just like you guys. But yes, please. Uh, you said the true open source licenses. Uh, what licenses does that include, and what does it exclude? So for example, copyleft content uh, was one of the major considerations where people were angry at the first um, Do you do uh, copyleft content in there, or is that excluded? Uh, the, the list of licenses, the list of licenses that uh, will be used to train the model, is under uh, legal review, and uh, I don't have a direct answer to this. But most permissive licenses, uh, the content that has the most permissive licenses, will be used to train the model. So uh, I think uh, when uh, we are planning to do a community release uh, around March end, and by that time uh, the details about which, which all content or licenses are used to train the model will be published. So that will be out in open. More questions, please. Um, I, I have my opinions on this. But, uh, yeah, this of which I would like to hear. How, how, would, how, how would you compare um, Copilot, mm. ChatGPT, and then Wisdom? Like, how, how would you, because, you know, um, yeah. it seems like it's uh, the yeah. same market, I guess. No, de definitely the same market, but the difference, the major difference is, is that Wisdom will be trained specifically to be able to be really good in providing you with really good Ansible content, right? That's the idea, right? Those other um, platforms, <laughs> while they may do something very similar or exact same thing, they're not, the training of them is not focused as, well as, as Wisdom's training is. Wisdom's training is solely focused on helping to write better Ansible content. That's, that's the... The, the, the biggest uh, thing there. Please, more questions. Actually, and before I move on, I'm going to put you on the spot. Sorry about that. You didn't tell me your opinions. Oh, um, well, you know, it, in terms of licensing, it's controversial, right? Of course. Um, yeah. Copilot is in hot water. Yep. Uh, OpenAI will soon be in hot water for <laughs> stable diffusion, not just ChatGPT. So it's. It's a new adventures, let's say, um, and um, yeah, I I, uh, I figured that wisdom was more suited for Ansible tasks. Yeah. That was my opinion. Yeah. It no, okay. And, and just to be clear, um, <laughs> legal is all over this thing because no one wants to be back in the place where those other ones are, right? Um, so they're doing their best to make sure they check all the boxes um, as much as possible to make sure no one gets in hot water. But, but yes, it, uh, I do understand the, the risk. I, I, I hear your, your expression there. And, uh, uh, 
to add to what uh, Walter said, we are also thinking about uh, in the spirit of transparency, we are also thinking of providing attribution to the user. So when the AI emits out a suggestion, uh, there would be uh, a logic in place to basically identify from which authors this suggestions has been picked. So if the suggestion has been uh, taken from say 10, co combination of ten content from 10 authors, we'll be providing that attribution uh, to the users in VS Code. So that's a differentiating factor between Copilot. Copilot doesn't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Any other questions? I don't, I don't want to move too quickly. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, how separated is it? Would it be possible for the community to build something based on that that integrates with either Mary Neobin or something like that? Mm. Or is that tightly integrated with VS Code? Well, I think it, the, the current rollout is it is tightly integrated to it, but at the end of the day, it is a hosted service, right? It's a service, right? An API that you can call. So, I, I mean, I don't know if we're, are we are going to be exposing how to be able to. So in the first iteration, no. The only interface would, the only interface in the first iteration would be through VS Code extension. But over time, uh, that might change and the uh, APIs might be made more public. But I, we can take that feedback back because it sounds like that might be something of interest. Okay. No worries. Okay. So, um, I'll jump to the timeline. So what you see here, this roadmap, this is um, not necessarily written in stone. So this changes, do not come looking for me or tell people that this is what I told you was going to happen. Um, so I just wanted to say that openly. And, and, and to be perfectly honest with you, um, uh, a lot of this information is, is um, something we're choosing to share with the community, not necessarily share with all of all of all of the users of the world, right, so to speak. Um, but at the end of uh, March, at the end of March, there is going to be the community availability of this service, right? It will be available to you to be able to use and leverage and try out and kick the tires and provide feedback um, or ignore, right? Your choice. But we would love uh, for you to give it a go and give us some thoughts on it, um, and that will be available at the end of March. Um, during uh, Summit, um, which will be in Q2, which is in May, um, there will actually be a, a launch, um, again, of the actual uh, Project Wisdom service and made available to uh, the, the wide the wide uh, world, people, world of people who want to use Ansible. Um, and then, of course, you know, as it goes forward, right, try to drive that adoption and definitely improve on it. The whole idea around this is to make Wisdom a tool that is better than the other ones and, and something that really provides you with some great uh, references and uh, context. So um, that was it. That's all I wanted to share. But more than anything, I do, I, I literally almost want to go around the room one by one. And I know you probably will hate me for it. But I want to hear everyone's thoughts. Because I know that, OK, I'll stop talking. Please. Yeah. Um, sorry. Maybe no. No, it's good. Um, You're kind of biased, though, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm curious. Um, I think a couple slides back, you showed sort of the distinction between community wisdom and Red Hat Ansible wisdom and this chart around the training of the model and the serving of the model. You mentioned that it's a hosted service. Mm -hmm. So is that then that the like, community version is the integration with the editor um, and Red Hat customers will get a different integration. Like I'm curious about kind of the business model and how that interacts with the machine learning model behind the scenes and how right. the hosted service works and sort of like this right. upstream downstream situation. Right. So to be clear and transparent, there are, there will be two independent services, right? One service that is uh, what we consider the community service, and then one service that will be considered a commercial service. A commercial service will go in line with anyone who has an AAP license, right? So Ansible, Ansible Automation Platform license. The distinguishes between the two, um, um, the commercial one will be leveraging verified and certified content, right? Which again goes with that AAP license uh, versus the community one. Will will be leveraging um, anything that has an open source license, right? So that's that's the distinguisher. There will be some features later um, that that may may differentiate the two, um, such as I think the one that um, if I had to go back here, right, and go back to the list of features, um, the content explanation 
and the content optimization, I believe those features are part of the commercial service only, right? They're not part of the community service. So that's the, that's, that's the two differences between the two. And I'm being transparent with you because I, I feel it's important to be honest about that and not like, oh, you know, it's all the same, you know, don't worry about it. Um, no, it's definitely not the same. So just. And will it be possible to self-host the community version like on your own network if you wanted to? Like, will the model be available to run that API? I knew this was this is this was this was the hard question and that's why I was prepared for it. So I would be transparent to say that the data set will be available for for you to be able to view, but not the model. And this is at this current time, right? I'm just, and I'm being transparent about that. You will be able to see the data set. You will not be able to see the model at this current time. That may change over time, right? And it's just, and literally this discussion goes back and forward on a day by day basis. And so we're, they're still trying to figure that out. But the data set for sure will be available. Yes, please. Um, if, if, if you use the wisdom, do you have to? <coughs> uh, does it have any consequences? <coughs> No, no, they're not. They're not. They're exclusively they're independent of each other. Uh, you can decide to opt out, which please don't. But if you do, it's okay. I won't judge you. You can decide to opt out and still use the service. There, there is no no implication that if you opt out, you can't use the service. Walter. Yes. Does the mod, is there anything <coughs> about why you're using VS Code? Is there any telemetry there because yeah. of your writing? Yes. So therefore, you writing code within your company. So, but that wasn't a question. But that that is a good that is a good point to make. Uh, yeah. Uh, to add to that, you can disable the telemetry. So, uh, VS Code has uh, very strict requirements around telemetry. If the default VS Code telemetry flag is set off, then any extension that uses tele uh, telemetry should shouldn't gather any telemetry. So, in that case. Uh, we are legally obliged to not store any of the telemetry data. So you'll just be uh, getting the suggestion. You can enable the wisdom service. Uh, it will upload your playbook context and the prompt uh, to the service, uh, to the model, <coughs> to get the inline suggestion. Uh, but that won't be stored. That's good. If telemetry is disabled. If this, uh, yeah. So. It is opt out, I think. They have recently changed it. So. Yes, please. I mean, since since the, um, the extension to VS Code are, uh, are readable, uh, the, uh, as far as I understand, uh, there is no support for compiled extension. Mm. Uh, but please, uh, I'm, I'm a bit user, so please don't let me know that. Uh, would you be publishing a uh, API specification so that maybe the community can write uh, Right. No, that was a similar question that was posted before. At this time, the API specifications are not being provided, but that does not mean that it is permanent, right? This is the, the whole idea of the launch in March is so that it, it make, make sure this thing is actually doing what we, it's supposed to do. And the only way we really can do that is by offering it up to uh, our community of users to say, please give this a try, let us know. Um, but as of right now, the, the API specifications is not something to be uh, released. But as you mentioned, the, the VS Code plugin is not compiled, so, I, you know. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, hey, um, I don't know. I, I, I really can, I'm, and I'm being honest, I can't really uh, answer that question, but, um, you know, feel free to uh, explore, I guess. <laughs> Please. Uh, is that going to be built into the existing Red Hat and Simul VS Code plugin, or is it going to be another one? It will be part of the same plugin. Okay, so the same plugin? Yeah. All right. Any, so I would love to hear from someone who has not asked a question yet today. Uh, we just want to remind you from the room that if we could either repeat the questions or give Yeah, I know. I've, I've, I've totally been sucking on that, but it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> we, we needed two mics. Please. Uh, will it be just for the playbook or also for role selection and stuff like that? 
so the question was, will uh, Wisdom be available for playbooks, or is it just for roles? Um, I believe it's available for any, whether it be a role or a playbook. Yeah. Uh, any, uh, any task? Sorry. Uh, so any of the task, uh, whether the task is within a playbook or within a role. So it will uh, emit a task snippet to start with. And in future, uh, there is plan to, uh, given a prompt, you can generate entire playbooks. But that's uh, in future, not right now. Cool. Yes. So I'm assuming plugins, you know, is out of the question as a plugin, right? Plugins generation. Plugins generation is. Out of the question right now. Yeah, it's not in consideration. So it's just Ansible playbook content and YAML files, basically. I'm sorry, no dynamic plugins yet. Cool. All right. Well. Of course, if you have any questions uh, or if there are any questions um, on uh, Matrix, um, we're here all day. Uh, I'll try my best to field them as much as possible. Um, and uh, we will be getting back with you all as to before this service rolls out to talk a little bit more about it, um, maybe celebrate it a little bit. And uh, more than anything, um, we just want to hear your raw feedback. You know, that's really important, OK? All right. Sorry about my energy today, but I'll turn it over to the next uh, next person. Feeling very, very, very flat. <laughs> Thank you for not throwing tomatoes as well. I appreciate it.